Hello everyone. Thank you very much for watching this video. This is Class NK Zero Emission Transition Center. We research on trend of the maritime industry and provide the latest information to support the industry's efforts for the transition to the better and greener shipping. This video provides the overview of the Poseidon Principles, a framework established in June 2019 for financial institutions to support the reduction of GHG emissions from international shipping. This video consists of two parts. What are the Poseidon Principles? is a section to explain the background, outline, four principles, and scope. And requirements under the Poseidon Principles is a brief introduction of what the signatories of the principles have to do. For the better understanding of the background of the Poseidon Principles, let us first review the recent developments in GHG emissions reduction from international shipping. This slide shows the GHG reduction measures recently taken by the regulators, including the United Nations, IMO, and the EU, as well as the initiatives by the industry. On the regulated side, GHG reduction on a global scale is addressed by the United Nations. However, it is the International Maritime Organization, IMO, that is discussing the measures to reduce GHG emissions from international shipping. The United Nations adopted the Sustainable Development Goals SDGs in 2015 and the Paris Agreement at the end of the same year. In 2018, IMO adopted the Initial Strategy on Reduction of GHG Emissions from Ships. It sets out the targets such as to reduce the total GHG emissions from international shipping by at least 50% by 2050 compared to 2008. Meanwhile, the EU is introducing the regional regulations because some critics say the IMO has been moving too slowly. As the latest development on the EU side, the European Green Deal was announced. This is a comprehensive policy package covering the areas of environment, economy, and finance. This policy package includes the EU's intention that its emission trading system, the EU ETS, should be expanded to international shipping to and from the EU ports. Responding to such global and regional movements from the regulatory aspects, the industry has also launched various initiatives to support the achievement of the IMO goals. Some of such initiatives are shown here. In June 2019, the Poseidon Principles were established, a framework for financial institutions to support the decarbonization of international shipping. In September 2019, the Getting to Zero Coalition was established, aiming to have commercially viable zero-emission vessels into operation by 2030. Currently, the number of coalition members has exceeded 180 all around the world. Class NK supports their aim and joined the coalition in October 2019. In October 2020, the Sea Cargo Charter was established, a framework for charterers to support the decarbonization of international shipping. For your information, a separate webinar featuring the Sea Cargo Charter is also available, so please watch it if you would like to know more about the Sea Cargo Charter. From now on, we would like to focus on the Poseidon Principles, the Poseidon Principles were established in June 2019 by 11 major banks based in the United States and Europe, mainly dealing with ship finance. The aim is to integrate climate considerations into their lending decisions to incentivize maritime shipping's decarbonization. The signatories are to be financial institutions engaged in ship finance, including ship lease companies. Currently, the number of the signatories is 27. 
The Poseidon principle set up a common rule to quantitatively assess how much the sheet they finance are aligned with the IMO GHG reduction targets. So based on this rule, the signatories should evaluate to what extent their ship finance portfolio is aligned with the IMO GHG reduction targets previously explained and should disclose the alignment score every year. This slide shows a list of the signatories of the Poseidon Principles as of 9 September 2021. The signatories increased to 27 from 11 at this establishment. The 27 signatories represent a bank loan portfolio of approximately $185 billion, covering over 50% of the global ship finance. The Poseidon principles have four principles as shown here. Briefly speaking, first, to conduct the assessment of the climate alignment in line with the technical guidance set by the Poseidon principles. Second, to recognize the importance of RO and IMO DCS and to use the data verified under the schemes in order to assure the accountability. Third, to comply with the Poseidon principles for all new business activities by using a standardized covenant clause in the contract so that the enforcement of the principles requirements is ensured. Lastly, to disclose the result of the alignment score for the sake of transparency. Under the Poseidon principles, the signatories collect the data of CO2 emissions from the vessels for assessment. The scope is defined as the ships of 5,000 gross tonnage and above engaged in international voyage. This is the same as the scope of IMO Data Collection System, IMO DCS, it means that the Poseidon principles can use the data already required to collect by the international regulation. Therefore, it would minimize administrative burdens of the ship's concern for data collection. Based on this scope, the signatory should assess the climate alignment of the ship falling under the scope every year until its debt outstanding is fully paid off. The technical guidance of the Poseidon principles sets out how to assess CO2 emissions and so on. Technical guidance can be obtained from the Poseidon principles website. From now on, we will briefly explain the requirements for the signatories of the Poseidon principles based on the contents of the technical guidance. This diagram summarizes the requirements for the signatories. It consists of four steps. Step 1. To collect the data from ship owners or ship management companies such as fuel consumptions and distance traveled. Step 2. To calculate the annual CO2 emissions from each vessel based on the data collected in Step 1 and compare them to the trajectory value to obtain the alignment score for each vessel. Step 3. To aggregate the vessel's alignment score to calculate the alignment score for the entire ship finance portfolio. Step 4. To disclose the score in the signatory's sustainability report or the like, and also to report it to the Poseidon Principled Secretariat. The reported scores of each signatory are publicized by the Secretariat every year. The Poseidon Principle sets out who to carry out each requirement and recommends that Step 1, 2 and 3 are to be conducted by a recognized organization, RO, such as a classification society. Now let us look at each of these four steps a little more. Step 1 is data collection and submission. The signatories should collect the concerned vessel's data from ship owners or ship management companies such as fuel consumption and distance traveled. The data should be based on IMO DCS data verified by a classification society. By using the verified data, 
the data's credibility is considered to be assured under the Poseidon principles. The data required by the IMO DCS is listed here. Among them, those in red letters are used for the Poseidon principles. And based on the deadweight tonnage, annual fuel consumption, and distance traveled, the annual CO2 emissions from each vessel is calculated and compared to the trajectory value provided by the Poseidon principles. The signatory should collect the relevant data together with a document called Statement of Compliance. Statement of Compliance is issued once IMO DCS data is submitted and verified by the Flag Administration or RO. In addition, the consent from borrowers or ship owners is required for the data to be used for calculations under the Poseidon principles. So it is recommended to include standardized covenant clauses prepared by the Poseidon principles into new contracts. For the existing contracts made before becoming a signatory, the signatories may need to separately obtain consent from borrowers or ship owners for the submission and usage of the relevant data. In step two, the carbon intensity metric called AER is calculated based on the data collected in step 1 in order to obtain vessel climate alignment. AER stands for annual efficiency ratio, meaning CO2 emitted to transport 1 ton of cargo 1 nautical mile. AER does not use the amount of cargoes actually carried. Instead, it uses an approximation of cargo carried based on the vessel's dead weight tonnage. The calculated AER value of the vessel is compared with the decarbonization trajectory provided by the Poseidon principles. And it is assessed how much the AER value is deviated from the decarbonization trajectory. The degree of deviation is called alignment under the Poseidon principles. The alignment is shown as the percentage difference between the AER value and the trajectory value of the ship type concerned. When the alignment is plus, it means it's misaligned with the decarbonization trajectory. And when it is zero or minus, it means it's aligned with the decarbonization trajectory. This slide shows how the Poseidon principle set the decarbonization trajectory values. Decarbonization trajectory value is based on the two assumptions. First, IMO goal to reduce GHG emissions by at least 50% by 2050 compared to 2008 as set out in the IMO initial GHG strategy. Second, a projection that transport work would increase by approximately 2.6 times compared to 2008 as extracted from the fourth IMO GHG study. Based on the two assumptions, the Poseidon principle set the trajectory value by ship type and size in a way that the trajectory values become stringent every year toward 2050. For your information, the starting point of this trajectory is 2012. AER value for 2012 was originally based on the study by University College London in 2015, but recently updated based on the fourth IMO GHG study in 2020. In step 3, the signatory's portfolio climate alignment is calculated based on the vessel climate alignment scores obtained in step 2. This calculation applies the weighting based on the dead outstanding of each vessel, as explained in the next slide. For easy understanding, let's take an example of a ship finance portfolio, including vessel A and vessel B, as shown here. Percentage difference between the climate alignment for each vessel against the trajectory value is referred to as vessel climate alignment. In this example, vessel climate alignment for vessel A is plus 19%, percent, 
and that for vessel B is minus 5%. Meanwhile, the alignment of the signatory's ship finance portfolio is referred to as portfolio climate alignment. And this is shown as percentage with plus or minus. This is calculated by using the vessel climate alignment with the weighting applied based on the debt outstanding for each vessel. In this example, portfolio climate alignment is plus 6%. As it is plus, it means that this portfolio is misaligned with the decarbonization trajectory. That's all for the calculations. And finally, step 4. The signatory should disclose the portfolio climate alignment score calculated in step 3 through their annual sustainability report or the like. In addition, the score should be reported to the Poseidon Principal Secretariat so that the Secretariat would disclose the scores of all the eligible signatories every year. In December 2020, the first annual disclosure report was published by the Poseidon Principal Secretariat. According to the report, all the signatories' portfolio climate alignment scores based on 2019 data range from minus 45% to plus 32% and the average score was plus 1.2%. This slide shows the annual schedule of the requirements explained before. Every year, the signatories should collect the data of the previous year in May or June, calculate portfolio climate alignment scores, and report the scores to the Secretariat by the end of November. The Secretariat publishes the climate alignment scores of all the signatories by the end of December. While the signatories are also required to disclose their own scores through their relevant reports. These obligations start from the second calendar year after becoming a signatory. That's all for the overview of the requirements for the signatories of the Poseidon Principles. Lastly, this slide explains the necessary documents and timeline to become a signatory of the Poseidon Principles. Financial institutions, including ship lease companies, can become a signatory through a signature. For the signature, the candidate is required to submit a standard declaration and signatory application to the Secretariat. And after the application is granted, the signatory is required to announce that it is the signatory of the Poseidon Principles. In addition, the self-assessment is to be completed and submitted to the Secretariat within five months after becoming a signatory. That's all for the brief overview of the Poseidon Principles, a framework for financial institutions to support the decarbonization of international shipping. Class NK is providing technical support related to the Poseidon principles. Please feel free to contact Class NK Zero Emission Transition Center for more details. Thank you very much for watching this video.